Hello everyone. I wanted to tell you about a recent event that we ran with Awaken Up. Now, if you haven't come across Awaken Up already, they're a fantastic women's network that has been doing superb things over the last couple of years. And they are across both Ireland and the UK and also have membership as well in the US and far beyond. But they invited us to go into their fourth workshop of the She Generate program. And I was speaking about six key personal skills that you can transfer into business and then we ran an active peers ai session so here were the results so first of all i picked six key skills that i felt you could transfer into business really well the first of those is active listening and one of the ways to practice your active listening is at the end of when somebody else has spoken to say what i hear you say is this makes sure that your mind keeps very focused on what they're saying but it also gives then the other person a chance to clarify exactly what they did say in case there was any misunderstanding. The second one is about getting organized. I think that can be uh, extremely helpful, but one of the ways that I think you can certainly help that is to diary your energy. A lot of people diary their time, and of course that's important and a good idea, but if you think about the hour, let's say from Wednesday morning to 10, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and Friday night from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., your energy is likely to be very different. So when you actually observe your energy cycles and see maybe what times of the day or times of the week you are maybe better able to focus or less able to focus and better able to do, that can be really helpful. The third one is asking effective questions. I have been working on this as a personal skill for a long, long, long time. And I'm always observant of these. And one of the best books that I've come across in this regard from people management point of view is Caroline Reedy's The Art of Asking the Right Questions. But what I also want to say is one of the most effective questions that I've been asked by a client was, if there was absolutely no barrier to resources, what could we achieve? And that's an interesting one because it first of all uncovers whether you're not asking the right way for resources thus far, they can see that. But also if you don't hide behind any excuses that you might be putting forward, what could be there too? And I find that's a really interesting question because the typical things that you can stand in behind disappear. Very interesting question. Try that one out with your staff. Um, another one is banking personal wins. That is really important for building your confidence. And as some of you might have noticed, I have been documenting what I've been doing with my breakfasts uh, since the beginning of the year. I was doing all that last year anyway, but I haven't been doing it on LinkedIn. So you can see when you actually hold yourself accountable to achieving something every day. Um, and when I say by being hold, held accountable, by also publishing it, um, you can actually see the progress as you go along. The next one is around building trust and a very simple thing of simply doing what you say you're going to do. That is how trust is actually built. If you say you're going to get that proposal in by Thursday, get it in by Thursday. But also pointing out when you do do that is putting as promised at the start of your emails. So as promised, I got the, email, the proposal to you on Thursday and dot, dot, dot. So it's important to do what you say you're going to do, but then say that you've done what you said you're going to do. And then finally, the sixth skill I spoke about is listening to how people introduce you. I do that all the time, whether it's on stage, whether it's on a webinar, whether it's on an email, whether it's at a networking event. I always listen to how people introduce me because that ultimately is my personal brand. That's how people perceive me or the company or the business or whatever it might be. So by listening to how you're introduced, that gives you a very clear insight into your own USP. Now, Sorry, USP being unique selling point in case you're not familiar with the term. So from there, what we did then next is I had the great, um, the great pleasure of interviewing Mary McKenna. And uh, many of you will know her, of course, and I have ta her tagged here in this post in case you don't. But I, so I spoke then to Mary all around the realities of entrepreneurship, what in many ways the personal sacrifices can be. And we spoke about what you have to give up in order to succeed, but also what delightful benefits personally come along the way and not just you know obviously the personal rewards through money or whatever it might be from that perspective but also the network that you develop the skills that you develop what it's like to live on the edge or live very dynamically in terms of a very steep learning curve what it's like to respond to customer feedback what it's like to pitch what it's like to win and a variety of other things like that and i think in any business journey. It's so important that you maintain those as you go along because that is what can sustain you, whether it's through the grind, and we spoke about what the grind is like, 
um, or also maybe times when you're feeling down, but also times when you're feeling right up here and you need to kind of, you know, come back down to earth for a little while as well to make sure that the excitement and enthusiasm turns into tangible and practical results. The next part of the workshop then was that we ran an active peers AI session. So to summarize what that means is we were matching people based on what they knew and what they wanted to learn. So for our consistency and continuity, we modeled the active peers AI session around those six skills that I mentioned to you earlier. So they were uh, networking, marketing, um, building confidence, building relationships, uh, managing your finances and identifying your USB, all of which had tied in with the workshop earlier. So then what we did was that we first of all asked people what they wanted to be matched on and also on the basis that with which they were going to be matched. In other words, how confident they were in any of those subjects and how much they wanted to learn in those subjects as well. And interesting, interestingly, we also asked them what they want to get out of the conversation. And if you want to get a rounded insight into anything, you have to ask a question a couple of times. So when we asked them what they ultimately wanted out of these conversations and fundamentally out of the network in general, they said... They wanted specific questions answered. They wanted advice and insights. They wanted to talk to the voice of experience. They wanted confidence, tools, ideas on how to approach a certain, whether again, it could be a pitch or a networking conversation, etc. They wanted to see other people's ways of doing something. Uh, they wanted to get concise direction. They wanted to build relationships and they wanted a meaningful chance to learn how to put themselves out there. And that ultimately, by the way, is why they found Awake and Hope in the first place, is because that is what the network very much focuses itself on. And of course, our Active Peers AI session needed to go through that method as well. So we matched people algorithmically based on that twice. And we also made sure that the matches were never the same. In other words, if they were matched in one area, then they wouldn't be matched in the second. So everybody had one chance to share their insights and everybody then had one chance to learn from each other. We also gave them a micro learning opportunity where in between each conversation, they documented how they would do differently. And we also then asked them afterwards, what did they learn from each other? Now, bear in mind, Active Peers AI simply puts the process and the technology in place for the effective transfer of tacit knowledge around a network or a group or an organization. But what always strikes me is what happens when you actually put that in place and what people learn from each other. Now, one of the things we learned along the way is that it's important to actually help people in those one-to-one -one conversations. So we developed a peer learning prompter as well, which actually gives questions to prompt the conversations along. And let me tell you the types of things that this group were teaching to each other is that they were saying, for a start, remember that they did have to prepare what they wanted to learn from each other in the first place, right? So so as the conversations went, went on in here, um, they were prepared so people knew what they wanted so they were saying things like ask a specific question on slack so the group have have a have a networking group on slack but be specific about what you're looking for trust your gut and be open to solutions everything counts in marketing you need to be strategic in what that is when you put the efforts in but they do amalgamate um set up standard operating procedures take out the tax the minute that it comes into your account and separate it so that then that man helps manage your cash flow. Force yourself into showing up even when, you, uh, even when you're not feeling great, but use those quick wins to power up those to power up your confidence. Uh, put the correct portion of money into each each pot. Match upwards and then match your money upwards as uh, your money increases. Tap into people with different mindsets and methods. And they also gave each other some ideas for business risk tools. And what this does, what an exercise like this does, is it opens up the possibility of people learning far more from each other, but also realizing who to go to long beyond the activity is complete. The other thing is some people love group work and some people love sitting at, let's say, a session like the early part of the workshop where I was speaking or interviewing Mary and taking insights away from that. But other people um, love the bit in the middle, which is the one-to-one. -one. And it was really interesting to know what they said because then we also asked them to criti critically analyze the whole process itself and give them a feedback tool to do that as well so they can see how to implement that in their own businesses. And what they said was, the conversations were motivating, pleasant and human, enjoyable, relaxed and interesting. They felt very positive and it was easy and productive. And I just want to read out two statements here about that because this is down to the network. This is down to the capability of what Awaken Up have done. They said it was easy to understand my share, ask questions and share my concerns. 
I was also given lots of practical insights and references to software tools. Somebody else said, I felt so positive, so positive. The question prompts and the peer learning prompter were so useful. So it was an action packed morning and evening. We ran two of them and that is the result.